Welcome back, everyone, to Issues of Faith. Glad you're with us. We are joined by Reverend Susan Beaumont. She is a consultant and an author. She's joining us via Zoom from Michigan. Um, she's written the book, How to Lead When You Don't Know Where You Are Going, just about the remarkable time churches are in. She wrote that actually before the pandemic. It could not apply anymore now, certainly during the pandemic. This is incredibly relevant. And, and I wanted to ask you, what questions do you feel like churches should be asking right now? Mm -hmm. Well, it's really hard for churches to, um, to breathe deeply enough right now to ask questions that really matter. Most of the questions that people are grappling with are um, what, what we've, many of us have referred to now for a while as technical questions. Everybody, you know, everybody's focused on how to reopen the building, when to reopen the building, what the safety protocols are, what programs should we use. And the uh, anxiety of the moment is keeping us from asking some of the deeper strategic questions that will actually lead us forward in this time. So I've been trying to cluster the questions I work with my clients on in three general areas. First, I think there's a whole set of questions related to what has been lost that is not coming back. So there's this great tendency for people to want to say, we just have to ride this out. And the sooner we can ride this out and get everybody vaccinated and get back into our buildings, and then all the programs are going to come back and the economy is going to recover and it's all going to be fine. Well, we all know that that's really not going to happen. The church is going to be profoundly different on the other side of that, which means that some things that have been dear to us are going to go away and they're going to stay away or they're going to change in really significant ways. So this is a season to be asking people about the losses that they're sustaining and helping them to grieve so that they can let go of some of those things, which then allows them to move into a second set of questions, really about what are the assumptions that have been um, forming how we do church for a while that may no longer hold. So for example, um, for a long time in congregations, we have assumed that um, the answer to the question, who do we serve, has been dictated by where our building is, right? That we look at the five mile radius around a church building and say, this is the community we serve. Or if you're a regional church, you draw that circle a little larger. Uh, but now people are discovering that geography doesn't matter in the way that it used to. So if geography doesn't matter in the way that it used to, then maybe membership doesn't matter in the same way that it used to. What does it mean to belong to an organization and what, what kind of tiers of membership will we have moving forward if we have some people who never show up on our campus but attach themselves to us? And how do we relate to the people who are with us physically and those that are not? That's what I mean about what are the assumptions that no longer hold? It is going to be um, tough. Well, okay, did you have one more? You had one more, right? I had one other set of questions, which is just to say, um, what's wanting to emerge? And that gets back to that deep attending stance of just noticing if God is transforming us and we are being led by God, then we will be shown what needs to emerge next. But we have to be still enough within our own spirits to notice it when it's being shown to us. We do what have to have, need? yeah, we have to have that confidence that God is in control you, I, I attended one of your seminars and, mm -hmm. and, and loved it. And that's why I wanted you to come on. You mentioned um, somebody from Pixar, right? Mm -hmm. Talking about mm -hmm. the sweet spot between the known and the unknown is where originality happens. Yeah. Pixar is certainly mm -hmm. successful and, and we can learn from, from what he's saying, right? Right. That the key is to be able to linger there without panicking, to linger in that sweet spot between the known and the unknown where our deep desire is to panic and retreat but to stand there calmly without panicking so that we can tap into that remarkable creativity that's wanting to deliver itself to us here and so when you talk about some of the things we have to let go of or think that maybe might not be there that is hard for people um it is what 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 might be some of those things? Are the large buildings going to be what they've always been? Um, or we don't know yet. I mean, can, are there some things you could yet. identify? 
Yeah, we don't know yet. Certainly our relationship to our buildings is going to change. I mean, that's just becoming clear um, that, that there are people who are finding that they enjoy an encounter with church that does not relate to the building at all. And so wise churches are the ones who are going to be able to think about that and to imagine how to recraft what they're doing. Uh, one of the traps I see people falling into is we have these staff teams we've built over time with people who are really skilled at developing programming, <laughs> programming on site, all kinds of programming for children, for youth, for adults. And in fact, moving forward, we have to be careful that the skill set we've used in the past, which is designing programming for people to come to us and take with us in our on our campus, that we don't let that overly direct what happens next, because in fact, something new is probably wanting to emerge around that. So I do think that we're going to have to let go of a lot of how we've thought about membership. We're going to have to let go of a lot of how we've thought about programming. We may even have to let go of thinking about the um, people coming to worship physically in person as not being the centerpiece of what we do as a congregation. And that's really hard to wrap your mind around because that's always been, okay, it begins there. It begins with the people gathered in the sanctuary and then everything builds out from there. Well, what if it doesn't begin there? Then, then, then what are we? Who are we? That is, that is a fascinating and, and um, even scary question. And, Very scary. And, and one, yes, one of the things we've talked about on this show is, is it's harder to get young people to go to church and what are churches going to look like in the next generation and, and the secularization of, of, of society. What do you yeah. think this pandemic has done? And, and, and does it make us more likely to become more secular or is it an opportunity to, to go in the other direction? I guess, what, what do you think will look like in 10, 15 years? Yeah, well, I, you know, I really invest myself. I'm trying to train myself to not make predictions because I, I don't think that serves us well and I don't think that carries the message. But I think we can talk about some of the um, some of the some of the assumptions that we have to challenge, you know, to, to say this this part might go away. This part is going to shift. I. Um, I mean, one thing that's clear is a lot of people are discovering um, that they really like um, having a quieter Sunday morning with their families in their homes and having some kind of a faith experience there, right? Um, how much of that is going to rebound back? I don't know. You know, it's difficult to say. I hear a lot of church leaders say, we have to get back into the building because people are losing the habit of being in church. But in fact, if if that's what we're hanging this whole experience on, that that people are in the habit of coming to be with us, we're in trouble <laughs> if it's only been a habit, right? So we're going to have to meet people where they are to figure out what's resonating with them in their faith. I am so hopeful about the future of the church and about what can transform here. I do think there's going to be a lot of pain along the way. There's going to be a lot of churches that don't make it because they won't be able to let go of some of those long held assumptions about how church works. There's gonna be a lot of pain in the reorganization of staff team. I mean, we, we're already seeing this in staff team designs that churches are needing more communications people and more operations people and AV people and less programming people. And there's gonna be pain in that, but there's also gonna be just this richness and this creativity and you can see it already in some people who are finding really um, kind of exciting new ways to connect with people and new ways to define who is my neighbor. That's, that's really what this comes down to. How will we define, answer the questions, who are we? Who is our neighbor? And what is God calling us to do or become next? And, and living at the intersection of those three questions is the whole thing. And now is a time for, for listening um, you say surrender, which isn't um, a negative act. It's really an act of, of, of listening. Um, yes. We could talk so much longer about this, but our time is up. I want to thank you, Reverend Susan Beaumont. Thank you so much for being here. It's been a delight to be here. Thank you, Ben. All right. Thanks uh, to all of you for watching Issues of Faith. Have a great day, everybody.